Good morning, friends. Welcome to Dream Big Today. Formerly Elizabeth Sharon Ann, it will be official September 1st, so we just keep reminding you so you won't forget. Today is August the 22nd, Monday, Magnificent Monday, and if you have been reading with us throughout this year, you have fit, hit day 234. Isn't that awesome? And if you haven't been reading through it with us this year, no worries. Jump in today. And and if you if you've missed some days, don't worry about that. Just just keep keep reading and and receiving the word and and it's all good. So if you would put your prayer request in the chat box, put your praise reports in the chat box. We love to, to pray over you and we love to celebrate the miracles that God's done in your life. And Donna records those. Our, our friend Donna is just so faithful in that. And we, we just, you know, we just enjoy enjoy the interaction that we have with you on on Facebook and and YouTube so like Facebook like YouTube so you'll be able to be notified and whenever we come on but this is 8 30 every day and so we have various ladies doing this and so I get to do it on Monday and Mondays are a great day to kick off your week in Bible study and just get refreshed and so as I start today, I want to start with my devotion. Hey, Montana and Christy, my friends are on today, and I love that. I love seeing their names pop up. Okay, so today in the devotion, it would have been so nice if Job would have had my little devotion book. Wouldn't that have been great? But, you know, we're going to be going into Job 4 today. But let's just see what this would have spoke to Job. Dear Jesus, help me to trust you in the midst of a messy day. We, Job had a messy day. I don't want my inner calm, my peace in your presence to be shaken by what's going on around me. Oh, if Job would have only had friends that could talk to him like that. Even though I live in a temporal world, I know that my innermost being is rooted and grounded in eternity. When I start to feel stressed, see, we saw and we have read that he definitely is stressed. I need to detach myself from the disturbances around me. See, when, when my husband's sciatic nerve started acting up and, and pain shooting down his leg when we're driving in the car we feel stressed we feel a, a disturbance coming in over our soul we start praying to get somewhere where I can get him help as I stop striving to maintain control see you know I I'm a control person and was Job a control person Oh, my buddy Nancy's on there today. She'll be able to answer a lot of questions for us, won't you, Nancy? You enable me to relax in your sovereign control and receive your peace that transcends understanding. How can you receive peace that transcends understanding whenever you've lost everything that you ever had? People that are dear to you, your home, your livestock, this says, your word instructs me to seek your presence continually. See, that's why we get in the Bible every day. That's why we pray every day. Because we've got to stay connected. We've got to be yoked with him and not to what's going on around in the world. Please share your mind with me and open my eyes to see things from your perspective more and more. I love to hear you telling me. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Take heart. I, I have overcome the world. Lord, I rejoice that the peace you give me is sufficient for all my circumstances. And I think somebody asked what this was. And this was Jesus listens. And I love that. I love that. Okay. So as we start, 
with Job, I just want to back up just a tad bit. Um, we've got we've got Job that has been, as you read yesterday, all you know, Satan got permission to test Job, and and now then we're we're the next basically the next day. I want to say the next day, chapter four. We've had his friends man if you had friends like this who needs enemies i mean they sound they sound really good but eliphaz eliphaz the tenamite tena Kimbanite, and he appears to be very wise see that's that's something that happens to some of us because we we have uh we have friends that have a lot of wisdom and so we we know that there's a difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom and we should always seek the godly wisdom good morning d and so eliphaz has started his statement with if someone ventures a word with you will you be impatient <clears throat> but who can keep from speaking see that that statement alone would have made me just clam up that's not an inviting statement that it, it, you know these these three guys came and they sat in silence with him for a week <clears throat> they they never said a word now that was the best thing that they could have done because you know, you all you don't always have to have something to say. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like I have, you know, man, I've got a lot of wisdom. I've got, I've got experience. I have children. I'm I've I've been divorced. I'm remarried. We will soon have our 39th wedding anniversary. We so we've got the relationship thing going. I've got neighbors, I've got, you know, I've worked based on everything. I think, oh man, I can, I've got free stuff to say, but how do I say it? Good morning, Lori. There's my sweet girl, Lori. So Eliphaz came from, from Timon and this place, this community was known for wisdom. So I'm sure that it would be like if somebody said, oh, I, I went to school at Harvard or I went to school, you know, Yale or something. You would think, oh, my word, boy, they they are qualified to answer all of my questions. Well, you know, not always so. Um, <clears throat> let me see where I, I want to get into my notes. We'll see as we look in here, Eliphaz has a lot of good and true comments, but he made wrong assumptions. Number one, his assumption was good and innocent people never suffer. Number two, those who suffer are being punished for past sins. And number three, Job, because he was suffering, had done something wrong in God's eyes. So, you know, I've probably been guilty of that myself in thinking, well, you know, they have trouble all the time. So let's review your life. Well, you know, I didn't I didn't review my life. I just want, you know, I can help you fix you. But let's leave me alone because I'm still a work in progress. Eliphaz. Eliphaz explains to Job basically that his suffering is due because he sinned and his advice to God or to I saw God in my Bible his advice is to go to God and lay his cause the cause before him so let's look this it's this I mean you know it's sad because sometimes somebody can come up and give you what they feel like is you know uh empathy and enc encouragement but that encouragement backfires and so that's what i'm feeling like this is because he 
is talking in like verse eight, my experience shows that those who plant trouble and cultivate evil will harvest the same. Well, his experience comes from observation and resulted in his own spirituality. He gets to the heart of his argument. Job must be guilty. You must have a bunch of stuff that you've done that nobody knows about. Otherwise, you'd be successful. Well, you know what? We've read in Deuteronomy 28 on, on the blessings and curses. However, that was written way after this. This all of this took place because of uh, or before all of that was written. But you know, the same feeling would hold true. You must have done something wrong. And if he could have only read James at uh, my church service yesterday, it was about James 1 1 through 3. Believers can face trials with joy, knowing God will use such trial to bring maturity. The point of every trial is to make you trust in God even more. What if, what if Job would have been able to have talked to James, Jesus' brother? What if he would have been able to read my devotion? Oh, he had friends. He had friends. And he had this friend that, that talked about um, having a, a vision at night in verse 13. It came to me in a disturbing vision at night when people are in deep sleep. Fear gripped me and my bones trembled. A spirit swept past my face. Don't you know that he just really was animated whenever he was talking about the spirit and how that just went across? And I know because I felt it, I had the chills down to my bones. Well, it must be from God. And a lot of times it's not. Because, you know, the, the devil can play that game too. And he can, he, can, he can have his demons and demonettes appear and, and try to confuse you. Um, in verse 18, Eliphaz says, if God does not trust his own angels and has charged his messengers with foolishness, well, you know what? He did have a fallen angel, and that would be Satan. That's the one who is do it, has done all of this stuff. We go on down into, um, oh, no, I want to back up just one second. Uh, in the, in the, about the vision again, whether it came from heaven or hell, we don't really know for its communication shows and wrinkles a wound without providing a cure. And that's a commentary by Clark. So it's not a, a encouraging or uplifting. A vision or a, a spirit from God isn't going to come down in, in, cause and create terror okay chapter five cry for help but will anyone answer you which of the angels will help you man what a friend in verse three i have seen that fools may be successful for the moment but then comes sudden disaster you know i've heard i've heard stuff like that whenever i had uh, a a relative really close to me that that had experienced a what could have been an awful disease and somebody would come say oh I know I had I I had a friend that had the same thing and and they got over it they were fine well I can't tell you what happened five years later oh we won't go there you know I mean that wasn't encouraging they started out really good but th they kept talking when they should have quit talking and been silent like these friends that started out silent. Um, then Eliphaz explains to, that Job is suffering because he has sinned in verse, uh, in chapter five, verse eight. If I were you, I would go to God and present my case to him. We see in chapter six, verse 29, 
Job says, stop assuming my guilt. I have done no wrong. Do you think I'm lying? Don't I know the difference between right and wrong? Job is not saying he was sinless. He was talking about his own integrity, not because of that. He was talking about integrity because he had the right relationship with God. See, the only perfect person that has ever walked on the earth is Jesus. Everybody else has had their own, their own personal issues. I definitely do. But we, we learn from this how to be a friend to somebody that is struggling. We learn from this how sometimes things are happen to, happening to you that isn't a result of your actions. It may be in the spiritual world. It may be a result of your actions because you made bad choices or you might have just been in the right place at the wrong time. However this is, this is definitely a reason why we stay in the Bible, why we pray, why we continue building our relationship up with God and, and our faith. Job says in verse in chapter 7, 1, is not all human life a struggle? Our lives are like that of a hired hand, like a worker who longs for the shade. And then he says in 6, my days fly faster than a weaver's shuttle. They end without hope. Do you, have you ever felt that way? You just feel like that everything is out of control. You have no answers to why, why you lost your job, why, why you can't pay your electric bill this month. You have no answers. I mean, things are just going out of control. He says, oh God, remember that my life is but a breath. I will never again feel happiness. The depression has set in and, and he, just, he, he just doesn't know. He doesn't know. What if his friend that was talking to him just simply said, I'll, I'll, I'll walk with you through this time instead of trying to figure out what was going wrong with him. In verse 20, if I have sinned, what have I done to you, a watcher of all humanity? Why make me your target? Am I a burden to you? For soon I will lie down in the dust. When you look for me, I will be gone. You know, poor Job had, had things going great. A huge family. Livestock, plenty of food, crops. And this hit, you know, we, we can, we can have things going really good today, but how are you prepared if you lose one thing? Job lost it all, except for his wonderful wife that wasn't much of an encourager at that time either. How can you get through that day if you do experience something like that? You know, it, it can be it can be very difficult. I, I, I told you about our vacation when we went in, you know, the vacation. Yeah, I was having a tough time on vacation. But, you know, our vehicle broke down. It cost us almost three thousand dollars. We had to have a towing fee that was like twelve hundred dollars. We had to rent a vehicle. There was another fight. I mean, it ended up the, the cost just kept going up. This is not what I expected. I expected it to be fun all the way from the start to the finish. Well, you know, we serve a God that takes care of us. We didn't get excited. We didn't get anxious. We didn't stress. We just kept going with the day on whatever was happening that day. We could still fish. We were still in the mountains. But you know, on the end of my story on that day, because your story is never finished until it's finished. And it's still going on, but I haven't put a period to the dot on or to the end of my story. But we're we're getting we're getting a refund on our big bill at the at the service center. We're getting a refund for our towing fee. See, this is he's taking care of us. I didn't jump up and down and scream. I didn't I didn't go down the Joe bro. You know, I feel like that, you know, God takes care of us. Keep praying. First Corinthians 14, 18 
through 40. And Paul talks about uh, tongues and prophecy. Now we, I, I love, I love this. I, I, you know, I think it is a beautiful uh, time whenever you get to experience that. Whenever uh, you're in a in a group and then somebody starts speaking in tongues and somebody um, interprets, it's just it. You just feel feel his spirit in there. Now. Paul has got, uh, he saw great value in the gifts of tongues for his own devotional life before the Lord. Though when he gathered with Christians, his concern was to be a blessing, not with getting a blessing. He says, I thank God that I speak in tongues than any more of you, than any more of you. But in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in an unknown language. And see, don't you understand that? Because in a, in a church group, you've got a mix of people. You've got some people like the first time I ever, I ever heard somebody do that. It was just, it was really kind of different. I mean, I probably wanted to, you know, grab my purse, my Bible and sneak out the back door because that was kind of weird. I didn't, I didn't understand it, but it's different for me now. It will be different for somebody else that experiences that. But what he's saying is 10 words is so much better to give that encouragement than unknown. And then dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babes. And when it comes to evil, but be mature understanding matters of this kind. And I thought, why would he say something like that? Because he's talking about being, you know, being like a child and being like a babe. What's the, what's the difference in that? So as I, as I'm looking and, oh, mercy, I've lost my, you know what, when you got tons of notes you're liable to lose one of them so apparently I've lost one but being uh like a child in your understanding you just want to receive it you just want to receive it you know I mean my my little grandson I mean he he just believes in what I say now does he does he obey not always but he you know what I say okay he gets that um but be innocent as babies when it comes to evil. See a baby, all they want is to eat and sleep. Just have somebody love them. They could care less about, about an addiction. They could care less about what's on TV. They could care less about anything because see, that has nothing to do with them. We just need to be innocent like that and not go into that, that type of world. Be mature in your understanding. Keep studying, keep it, keep praying for, for wisdom and discernment as you get into the reading. Paul is pointing them to a higher call. The Corinthians had shown themselves to be selfishly immature. And so then on down into, uh, oh, look, no, I got to do verse 21. It's written in scripture. I will speak to my own people through strange languages for the lips of the poor and through the lips of the foreigners. But even then, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. <clears throat> and this is Isaiah 28, 1 through 12. In this passage, tongues were a sign of judgment for the Israelites. Foreigners who spoke an unknown tongues invaded their country. So a strange for them, a strange language was a curse, not a blessing. They wouldn't know what they're talking about. They would think that we're, we're here and they're, they're getting ready to kidnap all of us, put us all in slavery. See, they didn't know what they were saying. Verse 22, so you see that speaking in tongues is a sign for, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is for the benefit of believers, not unbelievers. And so, if unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into our meeting and hear this unknown language, they will think you are crazy. 
There's a time and a place for all of it. Whenever, if you have that setting that, that you can freely do that, that's great. But order and organization is important because it's, is it going to be in uplifting? Well, it only is. And it goes on down to talk about the process of doing this. No more than two or three should speak in tongues and it should be in order and it should be, um, it, it should be interpreted. And if it's not, then it's just, it's just like a, a roar. So give each other encouragement. In verse 26, my, it says, well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize. When you meet together, one will sing, another will teach, another will, will tell some special revelation God has given. One will, speak, one will speak in tongues and another will interpret. But everything that is done must strengthen all of you. So it's an encouragement in this section to meet together. You know, we, we are the temple and we are, we are to shine his light everywhere we go. But because you can get online and watch your church service at home on Sunday doesn't mean that's what you should do all the time. If you're unable to get out, that's one thing. But if you're able to get out, it's, it's your time to give to somebody because we don't always go to get. We go to give also. So it's not, it's not being passive. Let everybody that comes to church, to a service, to a revival, have that heart to build someone else up. If I go to church and I see my friend Christy there, just, just her smile builds me up. I can go give her a hug and I just, I feel the, the warmth of like-mindedness, fellowship, and you know, it just brightens my day. Then we go on to verse 29. Let two or three people prophesy and let the others evaluate what was said. But if someone is prophesying, another person receives revelation from the Lord, one who is speaking must stop. See, he's giving order to this whole process. And again, he's not there yet. He's, he's had questions. He's heard. And he knows that things are just a little bit out of control at times. Now, here's the next one that I want you to want you just to listen to my perspective. And this is strictly my perspective on verse 34. Women should be silent during church meetings. It's not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive, just as the law says. Now, Let's, let's not get excited about this. I, I listened to several pastors speaking about this this weekend because you know what? Why, why would Paul say that? I've got the right to speak and say what I want to say today. Why does this still apply to me today? But what I, I heard different things. And so one pastor said, oh, women are absolutely not supposed to speak as he's going through his his uh, sermon and and he absolutely literal but i hear another one that's talking about the reasons paul was talking about this and so let's let me just dive into that just a little bit you you will make your own assessment on how you feel it applies to you in back in chapter 11 verse 5 of first corinthians it tells us that women prayed and prophesied in public worship. And we know that prophetess Deborah's leadership was to be a reproach to weak men like Barak. Now then, in this, in this setting, women may have been raising questions in the worship services that could have been answered at home. And so, if that was the case, then they interrupted the whole the whole thought process and the and the momentum of the service just to ask a question that everybody else always understood that that could be answered at home. The purpose of Paul's words was to promote unity, not to teach about women's role in the church. But think about this. 
questions, questions are seldom neutral. They, they are generally being asked to drive a conversation in a, in a certain direction. Some are asked to gain information or insight and many are, are posed for different reasons. Now think about this and remember back in the beginning when we read in January in Genesis, what did Satan do? He began his, his conversation with Eve by posing a question. And it wasn't a question that he was really curious about. His question was to plant a seed of, uh, to deceive Eve in questioning God. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of reasons that I can see why it's good to, to not speak. There, there's times to speak, times to not speak. If this is not your, your platform, do they really need to know what you have to say if everybody's already said the same thing? I, I, one of my things I generally say is when I go somewhere, they just kick that, that dead horse all day long. That's all I heard. I never heard anything new except for the first portion. And then it just went on because everybody had to add their two cents. Well, so at this, for this culture, women didn't speak in public. They didn't talk to men. They, they, were the wife and they were, you know, I guess you could just say they just kind of stood behind their husband. The husband was the leader. The husband was the strong one. There's nothing wrong with that, folks. There, you know, I want my husband to be the strong one. I want him to be the leader of my household or, or, or I, our household. I, I put my on there to be, act like it's only mine, but it's, it says, you know, again, if they have any questions, they should ask their husbands at home. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all about order. Time. How much time do you have? What is that? What is, what is that uh, uh, educational experience that she's had? Maybe not very much. Maybe she just needs to make mental notes until they get home. And then she can ask her husband all these questions. And then she'll understand next time that they go. I'm not offended by this, by this scripture at all, because I think that there is a proper time and place for everybody to ask questions with the right motive. And so as we go down to the end of verse 39, so my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. Don't forbid speaking in tongues. Verse 40, be sure that everything is done properly and in order. And then we hit Psalms 37 real quick. And I'm watching my time. I'm really, really trying to stay in 30 minutes. And so I don't have, I'm already late. Psalms 37, 30. What if, what if uh, Eliphaz had read Psalms? Well, he's before Psalms too. But it says the godly offer good counsel. They teach right from wrong. They have made God's law their own, so they will never slip from his path. See, his, his wisdom had a lot of truth in it as he's talking to Job. But there was no compassion. I mean, he, he looked at that, him with those stone cold eyes and he said, you've sinned. Just go ahead and confess. He probably really wanted to know what he did because you know, he, he was so successful and he lost everything. So that's all I have for today. I'm going to stop there. Job is a great, great um, lesson in friendship, a lesson on how to, how to receive. And so we will jump back in tomorrow with the next friend in, in chapter eight. And so you all have a great rest of the day. I love you. And I will see you in the morning. Bye-bye.